Limpopo's new alcohol regulations are now in force. That means taverns, pubs, bars are not allowed to sell alcohol after midnight. Before now, they were allowed to sell alcohol until 2 in the morning. The Liquor Traders Council says is going to court to try and overturn the decision by the Limpopo Provincial Government. Lucky Intermane is the convener of the National Liquor Traders Council. He joins us now. Lucky, good afternoon to you. Thanks for coming in. Why are you going to court? Thank you so much for the opportunity. We are going to court to assert our rights into what we feel are unjust laws in the province of Limpopo, especially in regard to the curtailing of the two hours of trading for on-site consumption, which affects our liquor traders who are taverns operating in a township space. So currently, uh, with the new law that has now just been uh, uh, enacted, we are supposed to close at 12 uh, midnight instead of operating normal hours of uh, 2 a.m. So we take an issue with that. But secondly, we have a problem with the increase of the license renewal fees, which have moved from 100 rand to 750 rand. We feel that that is a steep increase that is not backed by any, 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 any uh, defense uh, from the side of the government to say why are we having such a huge increase. But I think the overarching matter that we have is that uh, the province of Limpopo misdirected itself by actually promulgating the laws that are based on license regulations and trading hours of taverns. If you look at uh, Part B, Section 5 of the Constitution of South Africa, it says that provinces are not allowed to determine trading hours of local traders. Only local government and by extension municipalities are entitled to that. So we feel that that province has now accorded itself the powers that it should not have in the first place. Okay, and look, there's plenty of evidence that tighter regulations and actually earlier closing hours does result in less violence, right? No. You don't agree with that? No, we don't agree. We don't agree in, um, in conversations that seeks to approve a particular narrative without facts. We need to see facts on the table, and we've asked the province of Limpopo to actually share with us the documentation that gave rise to them proposing that the closing to us early is actually going to reduce crime in that province. And if you look at Limpopo, it's not even a top three of high crime uh, provinces in South Africa. So we wonder what is so special about that province that it will take such a drastic step without any due regard of the livelihoods of those that are dependent on the alcohol industry. So Russia did three things in one go. It did it over a decade. It took a long period of time. It tightened up on opening hours. So in other words, it sold alcohol for fewer hours a day. It stopped alcohol advertising and it increased the price of alcohol. The result, as the World Health Organization described it, was a dramatic increase in life expectancy. I think we can agree that's a good outcome. It worked in Russia. Why won't it work in Limpopo? Uh, it's a good outcome, different dynamics. Uh, Russia does not have over 34% unemployment rates. Russia does not have three out of four youth not employed. Russia does not have a corrupt government. Russia does not have uh, provinces that are not able to do basic Russia things. doesn't have a corrupt government. Uh, we are talking about South Africa. I'm here for South Africa. Russia has a different conversation. But I'm saying that we cannot compare the two. The two countries are different. The societal dynamics of the two are different. High poverty, South Africa, high unemployment, and equality. We have an underlying reason why people take alcohol the way they do. And we're on record of saying that abuse of alcohol in a country is something that we need to address. Hence, we take an issue that the province of Limpopo will feel that the best way of addressing this is curtailing the two hours. We will do whatever it takes to assert our rights to ensure that we trade and close at 2 a.m. There was a long period of public consultation. Um, as I understand it, I presume you were part of that. There are other groups that would have been part of that too, other people who would have thought that this is a good idea. Were you not listened to, or were you just drowned out by the people in Limpopo who thought that this was a good idea? So our, our, our constituency in, in the province of Limpopo, as Kukune Trans Association and Mapalabora Trans Association, made submissions. Uh, there were workshops that were held in Libua Home in Sishiho in December, and we were part of those. But also, we felt that we were not getting uh, uh, the voice that we felt we could get from the department. Uh, we sent a letter on the 15th of March 2023 to the Premier highlighting the key issues that I've just highlighted around uh, trading hours and also the license renewal fees. We got a response on the 23rd of March 2023 to the effect that the Premier referred the matter to the MEC. We ignored us entirely. So in a meeting that we had with the MEC last week, Monday at, at 12 o'clock in Pulukwan, the state advocate indicated that the, there was not a single submission made with regards to this law. And this law has been uh, in the air since 2005. So we wonder that maybe our submission was thrown into the dustbin or it was entirely ignored. If we were taken into those direction, at least we would have gotten to understand why our submissions were not or didn't make it uh, to the final cut. Hence, we're taking this matter to court to assert ourselves. So it came into effect at midnight last night. I'm presuming it is the 1st of August today. Why are you only going to court now? You would have known this law was coming for a long time. You've kind of waited, well, past the last moment, mm -hmm. in a way, to actually go to court. 
we, we, we firmly believe in dialogue and conversation, and hence we, we reached out to the MEC to have a conversation with him to ask him to kindly uh, put uh, on pause uh, this law and then find ways in which we can properly uh, consult can talk to all stakeholders that are involved, but also do an impact assessment study of the impact of this law, not just on the liquor traders, but also in community and the economy of Limpopo. So we, we, we took our time, but we followed all the letters of the law and the right processes. So our aim was to uh, have this matter sit uh, today, but uh, the province didn't give us enough time to be able to do that because uh, the state law says that we must give government 72 hours before we can take them on an urgent matter. Hence, we then decided to secure the 8th of August. But we feel that that will work for us because it gives the government enough time to uh, go through our papers, which we feel are very strong enough. They present a compelling case for us. And uh, come the 8th of August, we are confident that we should be able to interdict this and our traders can go back to selling alcohol till 2 a.m. Um, at the moment then, so you've gone to court on this, the law is in force, so it would be illegal, I presume, for someone to sell alcohol in Limpopo after midnight tonight. So it, it would have been illegal uh, some few hours ago, midnight, almost uh, coming from the 31st into the 1st. Mm. Uh, but we worry about uh, this law and laws that are being passed in the country without you know, enforcement mm. uh, being in place. So compliance is a matter that you know, could be debated. It can be self-compliance. It can be our liquor traders being uh, self-regulating themselves. But when you have to now include you know, a law enforcement to be able to come and check 39,000 taverns that we have as a country, in Pombe is about 6,000 taverns, give or take. So we're not sure how this is going to be done. But also before you put an act in place, you need to be able to run workshops and tell people how this is going to run. Yesterday we looked for the MEC to uh, cl give clarity as to whether uh, liquor traders can continue to trade pending the finalization of this case. There was no way to be found. It went underground. Okay. Um, you, you concede, I think, that there is a problem with alcohol consumption in this country. And to a large extent it's about how much we drink. And South Africa is one of the higher rates of per capita mm -hmm. Uh, drinking, or drinking of alcohol. Um, I must just point out that only roughly a third of the country actually drinks alcohol. That's a third of adults. In other words, the people, it's the people who do drink who drink a lot. How would you reduce that? You work in the alcohol industry. You will have watched patrons. Mm. Is there a way that we can make ourselves better drinkers? And other countries are better drinkers than us, healthier drinkers. Uh, so we concede uh, your point up to the level where alcohol abuse is an issue. I was wondering how far you would let me go. <laughs> no, you're not going to get away with that one. So, if you, if we, we, we admit that alcohol abuse in the country is a problem, and we've managed to sweep this under the carpet for a very long time. So, what COVID-19 did is to rear its ugly head as far as this abuse uh, has gone. Mm. Uh, we, we accept the notion around uh, that many people do not drink in the country. And hence, our, our, our plea to the country is that we need to respect those that are around us, those that don't drink alcohol, and our neighbors that do not sell alcohol, they need to be able to sleep early. We should not play loud music at night. So we need to uh, bear testimony to how we want uh, to treat each other in how we sell our alcohol. But I think come to an important question, Stephen. We do not have a silver bullet. I think the issue of alcohol abuse requires uh, all hands on deck, uh, civil society to come together with the alcohol industry, uh, the liquor traders, and find a lasting solution to be able to address this matter. But we also need to take cognizance of the fact that there are underlying factors that also give rise to people abusing alcohol. Uh, you might know someone who abuses alcohol. I know someone who abuses alcohol. Do I talk to that person? Do I encourage them to limit? I don't think that is a solution. We need to be able to divert people to long-term programs where they will be able to seek a better future outside of the bottle. Even though we sell alcohol, we do not encourage people beach drinking, buying more alcohol. You know, that for us doesn't excite us. We want to have a sustainable business and people should drink responsibly. Lucky and Tamane, thank you. The convener of the National Liquor Traders Council and uh, a very strong view, as you've heard, they're going to court on this particular issue. In a